So far in our discussion on aldol condensation reactions, we focused on condensation reactions between the same exact carbonyl compounds. But let's suppose our two carbonyl compounds are now different. So anytime a condensation reaction takes place between two different carbonyl compounds, such an aldol condensation is given a specific name. It is known as a cross aldol condensation reaction or more specifically a mixed condensation reaction. So these types of reactions aren't very useful and that's because they usually produce many different types of products. So if I want to produce a specific aldol product this is not a good way to go because many different products can actually form. So to see what we mean let's take Take an example. Let's consider these two ketones. So we have two different carbonyl compounds reacting in a condensation manner via the aldol condensation reaction. So this is by definition the crossed aldol condensation. So basically this one can act as the nucleophile and this one can also act as the nucleophile. And there are four possibilities for our aldol products. So we have one, two, three, and four. Now on top of that, if we are under acidic conditions or if we have a high temperature, each one of these aldol products can then undergo the dehydration reaction to form the alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone compound. So we see many different types of products can actually form and this type of reaction isn't very efficient in producing a specific type of aldol product. Now, one way in which we can limit the number of products that are formed in the cross aldol condensation reaction is to make sure that one of these carbonyl compounds does not have any alpha hydrogen atoms. So such a reaction between an aldehyde or a ketone and our carbonyl molecule that does not have any alpha hydrogens is known as a Claisen schmidt condensation. So this is a specific type of a crossed aldol condensation reaction. So to see what we mean and how this reaction limits the amount of products that are formed, let's take a look at a specific example. So these are our two molecules, our two different carbonyl molecules. So this is by definition a crossed aldol condensation. Now, is this a Claisen schmidt condensation? Well, this is our ketone and this ketone has alpha hydrogens on this alpha carbon. But this alpha carbon of this aldehyde, the second carbonyl molecule, does not have any alpha H atoms. And that means this is our carbonyl molecule that lacks the alpha hydrogens, while this is our ketone that has the alpha H atoms. So this molecule, the carbonyl, the aldehyde that lacks the alpha H atoms will not be able to act as our nucleophile. Only this molecule will act as the nucleophile. So let's suppose we are under basic conditions. So that means when the base grabs the H atom from this alpha carbon of our ketone, we produce this resonance stabilized enolate that can now act as our nucleophile. Nucleophile. Now, it can basically attack either this carbon of the aldehyde or this carbon of our ketone. So there are two pathways that can be taken and this can lead to two different pathways. So after this step takes place and the final step takes place, we produce either product number one if our carbon, if our, uh, carbon here attacks this carbon or product two if this attacks this carbon here, the aldehyde. So instead of having a possibility of four or more different types of products, in this case we only have two different possibilities. 
and notice that our nucleophile in this case interacts with the ketone but the nucleophile in this case interacts with the aldehyde and we know when our nucleophile interacts with our aldehyde our equilibrium constant will be higher for the aldehyde case than for our ketone case and so that means the reaction pathway that involves the aldehyde will produce more product than the reaction pathway that involves the ketone. So just by that argument, we know that product 2 will be the predominant product because this is the pathway that involves our aldehyde that has the higher equilibrium constant value. So we see that usually in Claisen schmidt condensation reactions, only a small number of aldehyl products are actually possible and one of these is typically favored over the other. Now in the case shown above, aldehydes are more reactive towards nucleophiles than carbonyl molecules so we see product 2 is favored over product number 1. So when equilibrium is established in this reaction we see that aldol product number 2 will be favored at equilibrium compared to aldol product number 1. So we see that a crossed aldol condensation, also known as a mixed aldol condensation reaction, is a reaction between two different carbonyl products to form our aldol pro or two different carbonyl reactants to form our aldol products. Now this isn't a very efficient way to form aldol products because it can form many different aldol products but we can actually limit by using a special type of crossed aldol condensation known as the Claisen schmidt condensation in which one of these carbonyl compounds does have any alpha H atoms and so instead of producing many different types of products we can only actually produce a small quantity of products and typically one of these products is favored over the other one as we see in this particular case.